good afternoon. Uh, latest COVID numbers uh, today, about 834 cases. Uh, we continue to be in the uh, 800. So this is a higher number than we had experienced in prior weeks. <clears throat> We're going to get into today hospitalizations because a lot of folks ask, well, what is it that we, we look towards and plan towards? It really is making sure that we have the hospital capacity so that those who get COVID have the best chance of recovering. And of course, there's also capacity for anything you might need. If you have a heart attack, a stroke, appendicitis, any of those other conditions uh, that we have the ability and our medical professionals have the ability to, to save your life. There's just so many things that would have been fatal for people 100 or 200 years ago that are now just a simple operation, a few days in the hospital and you're out. Uh, we need the capacity to do that. Uh, some of the areas that have had COVID hotspots have not only seen record deaths from, from COVID, they've also seen the non-COVID fatality rate go up because people are not uh, going in or able to get treatment for uh, heart attack strokes and, and all the other things that they do where they might wait longer to try to seek out that treatment uh, or they might get a secondary quality of treatment if we don't have the capacity on the hospital side. So we're going to dig deep on hospitalizations. Uh, I, and of course, I, I do want to express my condolences uh, for the just over 2,000 Coloradans uh, and their families uh, who have succumbed to COVID. Uh, our heart goes out to everybody who's experienced loss. It might have been your brother or sister, your aunt, your uncle, uh, your loved one, your friend. Uh, and I want to express a deep condolences. Uh, we're, not, we're not through this yet. Uh, I think more of it is behind us than ahead of us, but we need to redouble our efforts to stay safe wear masks when we're around others, avoid groups, cut down on our social interactions, and, and uh, be safe. A brief update on the fires. Uh, we continue to have uh, record fires. Uh, it's important that people know that fire season in Colorado is still very much active. Fire season is not over. The threat continues. In fact, the Cameron Peak Fire, which is the third largest in the history of our state at 128,149 acres, is only 42% contained. And if there are uh, changes in, in wind, both um, speed as well as direction, uh, it absolutely could, could help spread that fire again. Mullen Fire, which is now partially in Colorado, that's the Wyoming-based fire, 170,996 acres. We have two other major active fires in our state. The Williams Fork Fire at 14,000 acres is 25% contained. The Middle Fork Fire at 11,000 acres is 0% contained. And, and I just want to make sure everybody knows as we enjoy our fall weather, we are still in fire season and uh, just some important things to do uh, to reduce the risk of starting a fire. And many of these fires were started by, by human activity. The majority of them were. Uh, if you're traveling, uh, make sure to check on, on fire and firework restrictions in the area you are. Be careful with anything that could start a fire. That could include a cigarette or cigar, could include fireworks, uh, could include um, uh, campfires. If you're towing a boat or trailer, make sure your safety chains are secure and not dragging on the ground. Uh, don't park your vehicle over dead grass that can be a tinderbox. Your vehicle can ignite uh, a fire there that can, can spread quickly. And of course, when, when camping, uh, be safe. Uh, use improved fire pits where you, where you can and, and never ever leave um, uh, until your campfire is completely dead uh, for the night or, or if you're moving on. And a good way to judge that is if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave, right? So if you wouldn't touch it, don't leave it. Uh, that, that, that can start another fire. Uh, there's a lot of county flexibility on implementing fire restrictions. The state open burn order is in effect uh, into early November. Uh, you know, uh, we're, not yet, we're not yet through this. Hospitalization. I want to dig into kind of who's hospitalized, where, why. It's important that people know this in Colorado. So first of all, um, historically, uh, looking at hospitalizations, uh, black, Hispanic, American Indian Coloradans are, are overrepresented in hospitalization. But lately, uh, there has been a significant increase in, in, uh, in, in the latest growth has been among white Coloradans in hospitalization. The age groups um, have been stable. The age group with the most hospitalizations is 60 to 69. The average age of a person hospitalized in Colorado is 54. We're going to dig into those numbers. So, um, you know, I, I think one of the misperceptions about this virus is everybody thinks it's it's someone else. It's wishful thinking. It's natural. I'm in my 40s. It's, oh, which I am. Oh, it must be people in their 50s who are going to help. You're in your 50s. It's people in your 60s. People who are 65 say, oh, no, that's people in their 70s. People in their 70s say, no, that's people in their 80s. 
Well, guess what, folks? It's actually all of us. Uh, we're going to show you who's hospitalized today and who's been hospitalized cumulatively through this whole crisis. Of course, there is a higher risk of hospitalization as you get into your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, but uh, there are people hospitalized in every demographic. The uh, length of stay, we're seeing about four to five days is the average, uh, a long spread. So some people, two to three days, and then what affects that average is some are 30, 40, 50 days, and those are the ones where you get into a much higher risk of them never making it out, right? Longer hospitalizations, uh, people, some of them get better quickly, others don't, and then uh, they, 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 they may or may not even make it out at all uh, when they have the 30, 40, 50 day hospitalizations. Um, hospital admissions have also been growing in the non-metro areas as well. So um, we go to the next slide there. So this is a really interesting one. Um, this is kind of the key one here that I want to show. It shows the percentage, uh, actually the, the age one will be even more important. This is, this is by race. So if you look at this, uh, right now a majority of people hospitalized are white in Colorado. Um, if you look at this cumulatively, it was a lower number. So the whole, the whole time it was 41%. Now it's 52%. So the fastest growing group uh, are, you'll see in a moment, are younger and, and whiter than, than who's been affected by this overall. Uh, the key message here, your race, your age doesn't matter. Wear a mask, be careful, be smart. Just cut down on, on how many people you see every day. If you're the kind of person that sees 12 people every day, get by for a few weeks seeing six, right? And, and, and trying to be six feet apart. And, and that, that's how we're going to do this. Next slide. So uh, this is interesting because we're actually at about parity with male and female. This is actually a bit of a surprise because a lot of the international data shows a, a higher risk of hospitalization for men. Uh, and, and, and that is a, a very small impact in Colorado. You'll see that of all hospitalizations, it's 52% male, 47% female. But that is very close to 50-50. So um, somewhat surprisingly, we are seeing almost equal numbers of men and women uh, in, in hospitals. So again, if you think, I'm a woman, I'm not going to be hospitalized. Not, not true. It's, it's about half and half in our state, uh, and, and that, that was somewhat surprising given some of the data that shows in other countries, in other situations, uh, a slightly higher. So what that might mean is, is that those other areas, that it's not necessarily worse for men. It might be that some areas have a higher infection rate among men than women. Uh, in Colorado, perhaps because our, 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 our workforce is more egalitarian, whatever the reasons are, very, very close to 50-50 in hospitalizations. Next slide. This is a very important one, um, hospitalization by age group. So you see a percentage of the Colorado population that each age group is, and then currently hospitalized, and then you can see on the far right all hospitalizations. So what you see is, you know, I'm, I'm 40 to 49, 13.8% of the people hospitalized right now in our state are, are my age. And, and, you know, what does that mean? You put it in the context of in the Colorado population as a whole, 12.9% of the population is 40 to 49. If you're 40 to 49, a higher percentage of Coloradans are hospitalized in your age group than you are as a percentage of the general population. So uh, again, as we know, obviously, clinically more favorable, 0 to 9, 10 to 19. Uh, this does not have the same effect in young people, developing adolescents, pre-adolescents, that it does in people even in their 20s. And you'll see that 20 to 29 age group, that's over 6.5% of current hospitalizations. So the risk is lower but you're not, you're not invulnerable. Six and a half percent of hospitalizations are 20 to 29. And then you see it rapidly getting into in the 30s and 40s, very close to parity. And then of course, what we already know, that if you're in your 60s or 70s, you have a significantly higher risk of, of hospitalization. Uh, the 60 to 69 year olds, a quarter of the people in our state that are hospitalized right now are 60 to 69 years old, just about one quarter. Uh, and yet they're only just over 10% of the population. So uh, that is the largest single group of people hospitalized in age by age, 60 to 69, and, and that represents a quarter of total hospitalization. So um, this, is, this is very important. I requested this information really just to see who is being hospitalized because there's a natural tendency. We're all optimists. We all want to think it's, we all want to think it's somebody else. If you're female, you want to think it's men. If you're in your 40s, you want to think it's people in their 50s. If you're uh, white, you want to think it's people of color. Uh, well, guess what, folks? It's everybody. This virus knows no opportunities. It's the president of the United States for, for two to three days. Uh, it's your friends and neighbors, and it could be you if you're not careful. Next slide. 
Um, this kind of shows the uh, age of hospitalization, so you can see that curve. There are the most people hospitalized in that 60 to 69 range, so I wanted to highlight that. And then we're going to get into kind of how long people stay in the hospital. So let's go to the next slide. Um, and this is uh, another way to look at age. Let's go back one more, another way to look at age. So you see that medium, there's the most people, a lot on both sides, but the most in that 60 to 69 range just as many in their 50s as in their 70s. So it's good to see that curve, just so people understand that. We see the data, we have it. Who's in the hospitals, now you know. Next slide. Uh, the average hospitalization uh, right now is, is in the four to five day range. Now that, that can be a little misleading because um, if you look at that, that top one there, the, the average of the currently hospitalized is closer to 30 days. Why is that? Some of those people are 40, 50, 60, 70-day 70 70 folks. Uh, so the new hospitalizations don't reflect the fact that some people will need to be in there for, for many months and some will not come out of that group. Uh, many of the fatalities, not all, some, sometimes it's, it's fatal sooner, but often it's fatal after several weeks in the hospital. Uh, and, and this is uh, important to note. So uh, for everybody that is in that four to five day range, there's also people in the two to three day range and, and then some that simply aren't getting better and are there for four, five, six weeks. Uh, some of them eventually recover and, and others tragically don't. Uh, we, we do have some fatality and loss in that four to five day range, but largely it's the people that then deteriorate and get worse. Um, so largely the people that don't make it out have been there several weeks. Uh, and it's also just, it's, 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 science does not yet know why that is some people and not others. It's, it's all groups, it's all ages. Uh, you know, similar risk distribution, the hospitalization, but it's truly uh, anybody that could be there three or four weeks and not make it out as opposed to two to three days and, and make it out. Uh, and, and that's uh, very important. Next slide. Uh, the, in, 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 the increase in the metro area and non-metro area, both increasing, but this just shows that this is truly statewide phenomena. Um, for the whole pandemic, only a quarter of hospitalizations have been non-Denver metro area. Right now, we're at uh, over 40% non-Denver metro area and 56% and, uh, metro area. So it's really, really spreading more rapidly uh, everywhere, but um, some of the areas that had been more fortunate are now seeing increases outside the metro area too. Next. Uh, this also shows the um, the uh, kind of hospitalization and, and uh, numbers. It's a useful way to look at the kind of residents by where they are. I think that might be the last slide on that. Is that right? So here's the takeaways. And, and, and then I want to get into some announcements we're making today. Um, the takeaways are that, that this affects you, right? I mean, it doesn't matter your demographic. Now, if you're very young, if you're 12, if you're eight, and, and this is a good thing because we, we tell this to our kids and, and, and I hope everybody tells it to yours. You, you don't need to be as worried about this thing, right? Um, one, two percent of hospitalizations uh, are very young people and, and some of those had other pre-existing conditions. But, you know, we like to think, I'm 45, we like to think, oh, it's my parents I have to worry about. Well, well guess what? You're 45. It's, it's yourself. A higher percentage of 40 to 50-year-olds are hospitalized right now in Colorado than we are as a percentage of the population. 40 to 50 year olds are overrepresented in hospitalization. And of course, even more so, 50 to 60, 60 to 70, 80 to 90. Uh, perfectly healthy, no pre existing conditions, many of them. Uh, and of course, there are those additional risk factors that we know about. Uh, but we see the hospitalization across all age groups, across all races, across all regions. There is no exceptionalism with regard to this virus. It does not discriminate. Again, if you're very young, you are more fortunate. It is much more minor clinically for the kids. Thank, thank God. Thank goodness, right? Thank, uh, what, what a wonderful thing that, that the, uh, the casualties uh, in 10-year-olds and 12-year-olds and 3-year-olds will be very, very small, are very, very small. Uh, but if you're in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, and yes, your 20s, 6.5% people hospitalized in their 20s. Uh, this can take people in their prime and make them sick and infirm and hospitalized. Most will get better thanks to the treatments that exist, and some will not. And as a society, we need to make sure that those treatments, those interventions are there for those who need it. Because when you look at hospitalization, some of the first-line treatments like oxygen, 
most of those patients would not make it if there was not the ability to be hospitalized and get that treatment, right? So, so it gets many of them through. The high-quality medical treatment is what does it. Um, I'm also, uh, we, we, we talked about the health dimension. There's two dimensions to this virus, the health dimension and the economic dimension, right? Shifting to the economic dimension, um, I'm pleased to ex uh, announce some exciting relief news. Today I'm signing an executive order that allocates $14.9 million in CARES Act funding to support our state's economic recovery, help those who need it. This is a re reallocation that's based on updated estimates from, from agencies on caseload costs and distributions. It's been our goal, and I reaffirm this with our federal delegation this morning, we plan to spend every dollar that we are eligible to do under the CARES Act. These are the federal, it's the federal money we got, right? If we don't spend it, we risk losing it. So we're, we're going to make sure that every federal dollar we got under CARES Act, and I do hope they continue with another bipartisan aid package, does that. So these new investments really build upon a solid bipartisan, par bipartisan partnership with, our, with the legislature to build upon some of the good work that we did with them to support small businesses, provide food and housing security to Colorado families, reduce evictions. And these investments are particularly important as we go into the winter months, uncertain for our businesses and for our families. Here's a breakdown of the 14.9 million that we're sending out. Six million to the Energize Gap Fund, uh, which uh, the current level of funding of the Energize Gap Fund, uh, 25 million. Uh, with 20 million provided by the bill, 5 million in lending capital, an additional 6 million today. That grows to 31 million. This is uh, a key, ambitious, bold policy that helps get money out to Colorado small businesses with 25 people or less. A grant uh, and a loan. Grants of up to 15,000, loans of up to 25,000. A priority for women owned and veteran owned and rural and minority owned businesses priority if they weren't eligible or didn't get paycheck protection program, both nonprofit and for-profit businesses are eligible. Uh, in the first round, we, and one of the reasons we, uh, we prioritize this for additional resources, $6 million more million, is we got over 6,000 applications requesting over $79 million in grants and $56 million in loans. Even with this money, it can't meet the need. Uh, more than half were women-owned businesses, more than a quarter were rural. 12% Latino owned, 10% black owned, uh, and the second round of applications just opened on the uh, Energize Colorado site, and we encourage uh, Colorado small businesses 25 and under to be able to compete, to have the resources they need to bounce back better than before and make it through these difficult times which are not yet behind us. In addition, we announced $2.6 million to the Department of Local Affairs to help housing assistance, to help uh, rent support to those who've been challenged economically or from a health perspective for COVID-19. $100,000 to the Food Pantry Assistance Grant Program, helping our food pantries and food banks meet the increase in demand that they've all been facing, and I visited uh, a couple now, two now, since uh, in the last month or two. Uh, and six and a half, or uh, six point two million, Department of Corrections for the staffing costs associated with the COVID-19 pandemic. So that money is is going out the door. The better we do on the health side, the better we do on the economic side. Uh, we have been very alarmed with recent trends. Uh, the mask wearing will absolutely need to continue. We are renewing uh, the the mask wearing requirement for the state. It's 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 one of the most important tools we have. It's really one of the things that separates Colorado from most of our neighboring states that are currently hot spots. The Dakotas, Wisconsin. Now the national hotspots, Wisconsin's had to activate their field hospital. Uh, we want to do our best to make sure that we can continue with the economic recovery in Colorado, move forward with businesses opening and thriving and consumer confidence, save lives. Masks are one of the best ways to do that. We're strongly supportive of, of, of whenever you're around others. And you know what? Look, we, I was wearing them long before they were required, uh, we, and we were wearing them outdoors when we walk our dog, uh, when we're with our kids. It's just common sense and it's smart, right? Like think of it, it's not, it's not, it shouldn't be controversial. I mean, think of it this way. If it was a, um, a, a foot infection that you could reduce the likelihood of simply by wearing shoes, you just wear the darn shoes. Even if you were somebody that normally likes to go barefoot and will go barefoot again someday, uh, if athlete's foot breaks out in your gym, you're probably wearing slippers or sandals for a week or two so you don't get it. This is longer and this is higher stakes. 
uh, you know, this ain't athlete's foot. We talked about the hospitalizations in every demographic group. We've talked about deaths in every demographic group. And, and many of the folks that are hospitalized have a significant health impact even after they are released from the hospital, right? Hospitalization is a very high threshold. You're in there four or five days, you make it out, thank God you're, you're better. Uh, weeks and months later, uh, many folks are still exhibiting, uh, uh, they've resolved their viral infection, but they are still experiencing health-related issues. Um, sometimes it even requires medical treatment. So we need to do better. Uh, means better wearing masks, um, and that's not because I say to do it. It's not because your public health officials say to do it. It's because you care about your health and you care about your family and you care about your neighbors and you care about your job. That's why we're doing it. And I'm challenging our fellow Coloradans to reduce the number of people they are near every day. Um, some people are more social, and if you're one of those that normally sees 30, 40 people every day, you don't make see 10 or 15 every day. And if you're somebody that sees four, you know, try to see two. Uh, this is the most concerning recent data in the last few weeks that we've had since early July. And we need to do better on the mask wearing, the staying six feet apart from others, reducing our social interactions, uh, washing our hands regularly, being smart, being safe, whether you're 23 or 93. Colorado cares about you. Your loved one cares about your loved ones care about you. I care about you. Let's get through this. I want to talk a little bit about Halloween. Halloween's a fun holiday. In some ways, it's a it's a it's a test for us to see how we can have fun in a safe way. Uh, Halloween means a lot of things. It means costumes, means candy, means fun. Uh, as with a lot of customs, this Halloween will look different. Uh, we need to make sure we do it in a safe way, and it's not a setback that prevents families from coming together over Thanksgiving, overflows our hospitals, costs our economy hundreds of millions of dollars. Here's some simple tips uh, to see how you can have fun this Halloween in a safe way. Keep your distance. That's a common theme. You know, six, eight, ten feet where you can. Get creative. Uh, find out ways to to uh, not have to be close to people, not physically handing off candy, but at a distance. Uh, outside, always better than inside. Small groups, you know, just your family as a unit. If you absolutely feel you have to trick or treat, your neighborhood, just keep it near your home. Uh, avoid those face to face interactions. And don't rely on a Halloween costume mask, right? Most of them have big old holes. So you, whatever you're wearing for Halloween is great, but make the face mask the, the part of it, right? I mean, these things are very decoratable. You can probably even find them online very inexpensively where you can put your, your own image on there. Um, that can be part. That can be part of a fun costume, uh, right? I mean, I mean, have fun with it. It's it's not the hand that any of us wish that we were dealt. But sometimes in life, when you're given lemons, you make lemonade. So make the mask part of the one national holiday we have, where mask wearing is actually a part of that holiday. Um, and so let's make sure that those masks are are at work. And and again, you know what we're doing in our family, and do what works for your family. We're just going to have, with our two kids, we're each going to decorate two rooms, and we're going to, uh, you know, when our daughter is in her room, that we'll all knock on our door, and she'll surprise us and give us candy, and then I'll be in one, you know, we'll, we're all going to be in charge of kind of decorating two themed entry areas, um, including including bathrooms, and, and we're going to trick-or-treat in our own house, and if you want to do that, that's fine. Uh, if you want to go out, avoid large groups, avoid the physical contact, make the mask meaningful. And, uh, and have a safe uh, have a safe Halloween. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, before I open it up to questions, I also want to remind folks that election ballots are arriving soon. Um, they 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 are they've been sent or are being sent today. Keep your eye out for the ballot. Colorado is proud of one of the best and most secure election systems in the entire nation. Our vote by mail system is uh, tried and true for over a decade. It's safe. It's secure. It's reliable. Uh, it means that you have many choices on how to vote. Of course, you can return your mail ballot. That's usually the best way at a drop box or in the mail. You can do early voting. You can vote on Election Day. Uh, and importantly, keep your family safe through the process. Uh, remember to vote. Our democracy is strengthened when we all participate and make it work. And with that, we'll be happy to take some questions. Hey.
when you're going to uh, renew the mask order and for how long. I think it expires on the 12th. But... Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's pending now. So I think uh, all of these are, uh, these executive actions are 30-day 30, 30 duration. Um, so that is uh, uh, the authority we have. So it will be renewed. Uh, there's going to be, you know, some minor changes to it, as there typically are with these. But I don't want Coloradans to get caught up in in in, in what it, in because in, in many areas in our state they're far more restrictive than the state. Uh, they're requiring masks in, in local downtown areas outside, and uh, you know for different age ranges. The state you know is not for every age, but it, and it's inside only. Just just we're just wear a mask. I mean this is simple. It's just as simple. Like you 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 shouldn't. You, uh, why do you need to be told by your county or your city or? By Governor Polis, that that's that's not even a relevant thing. I, I would hope that you you care about your family and your loved ones more than you care about you know your county health officials or your your governor. Although I appreciate your well wishes, uh, or or uh, your your municipal leaders, uh, wear a mask when you're around others, outside, indoors, uh, you know, and and, and when, whenever you're around others, because it has a significant impact on reducing your likelihood of getting the virus and spreading the virus, both. And, and, and just to create that mask wearing society where uh, the few people that aren't uh, know that, that, that they uh, should also do that to stay safe. And you know what, we care about them too. The people that aren't wearing masks, we care, I care about their lives just as much as I do the people wearing masks and uh, wearing masks keeps the people that aren't wearing masks safer too. So. Uh, that's one of the reasons we're doing better. You, you, you look at where the outbreaks are now, South Dakota, Wisconsin, they have a lower mask wearing rate than the nation as a whole, around the 45% range. I, I don't have the recent numbers from Colorado, but last I saw we were in the 80s. And I hope that we can continue that and keep it up. Uh, nobody loves this. Um, it's a piece of clothing that we're uh, are accustomed to now and, and, and know that we need to stay safe. Uh, but I, I think we're all looking forward to a day where we can put all of our masks in one big bonfire after the fire restrictions are gone and uh, send them off and, and, and not have to deal with that piece of clothing until Halloween uh, in future years. But we're not there, and, and masks are a very important tool to keeping our spread of the virus, deadly virus, lower uh, and moving forward rather than backward here in Colorado. So. Uh, there are many local mask orders in different places, and we have our state one, and of course that'll be renewed. But you know, don't don't wait for some government official to say you know wear a mask. Um, you care about yourself and your family more than anybody else in the world. Kills cares about yourself and your family, and I care a lot about you and your family. But I, I know that you care about your own family even more. Uh, stay safe, and masks are part of that. They're not an excuse for avoiding social distancing. They might reduce the spread 40, 50, 60%. That's great, depending on the type of the mask and, and the environment. But uh, they, you know, you can't wear a mask and be careless either. You know, a mask in an enclosed room with a bunch of people and a big party might reduce the risk a little bit. But that's not the kind of thing that, that we can successfully do during this without creating super spreading events that lead the virus to spread out of control and jeopardize the lives of you and your family. Uh, I'm the most worried that I have been since early July, since mid-July. Um, this is a significant increase in the virus in Colorado, trending uh, younger, trending whiter, trending not just the Denver metro area, uh, increased hospitalization numbers, not threatening our capacity, but the increase if it continues at this rate, uh, will threaten our, our capacity and, and just as importantly, threaten our economy um, too. Because one of the reasons we had a somewhat successful summer tourism season in our state is we kept our virus con relatively controlled. We have to continue to do that uh, if we're going to be successful in attracting visitors to shop in stores in Denver and Fort Collins to go skiing in Western and Colorado. Uh, we need to make sure that we do even better and, and uh, wearing face masks when we're around others is an important part of that. Well, Governor, this is Vinny Dale Shoot, I said Bloomberg News in Denver. Uh, regarding hospitals, hospital supply stockpiles seem to be in better shape than earlier in the crisis. But how would you rate the logistics, the dependability, the durability of the worldwide transportation system? Is Colorado making contingencies? Thank you very much. 
Yeah, what we saw in the early days in March and April was a breakdown in the global supply chains. Um, those global supply chains are partially back online, generally back online, but that is subject to outbreaks in other places across the country and across the world. For instance, while we made tremendous progress on tests, as an example, and we had drive-through facilities with quick processing, when they had large-scale outbreaks in Florida and Texas, a lot of the national supplies got diverted uh, to where those outbreaks were. The national labs got backed up, and many of the tests took seven, eight, nine days to be done. Now we're back to a day or two, three at most. Uh, similar with supplies, we recently announced yesterday that we're extending a mask per teacher per school, medical quality mask through Thanksgiving. Uh, that's very important. We're able to have enough medical grade KN95 masks to do that. But we do not yet have a sufficient stockpile that is built up to weather uh, a major outbreak in Colorado. Uh, they w w hospitals, many of them, would likely have to go to emergency standards of care, meaning reusing and recycling and providing uh, on the margins not the type of protection that they would want to provide in everyday business for the nurses and frontline workers. So we hope to avoid that in addition to the hospitalization issue, which we talked about, not having enough beds to treat either COVID or non-COVID patients, which we want to avoid, it's also a matter of making sure we have enough protective equipment to protect those first-line workers. We do today. Uh, we will tomorrow. But it is something that we absolutely worry about in the weeks ahead. Uh, Governor Charles Ashby from the Grand Junction Daily Sentinel. We just spent a lot of time talking about masks, and I don't want you to do another 10 minutes on it, but I do need to ask two questions here that, that are not related to each other. One, you created a little bit of a stir on your comments from Tuesday when you said that Mesa County doesn't have to wear masks. And uh, so I wanted to know if yeah. that's what you meant. Yeah, it's uh, pretty simple. I mean, everybody should wear a mask. Like, I don't know why anybody is waiting for their, their, their government to tell them to wear a mask, especially if you're somebody who's skeptical of government. Why, why would you wait for government to wear a mask? Look at the science and data. You care about yourself. You care about your family. Wear a damn mask. Um, uh, Mesa County and a number of other counties are in the protect your neighbors phase where they are devolved more authority. So uh, it's likely that Mesa County, as part of their mitigation plan because of the increasing cases in Mesa County, is including mask wearing. Uh, even even uh, potentially above and beyond whatever the state rule is. But but there's so much focus on what, you, you know, your county or state is, is telling you. Um, I even think a little bit of it is, is an insincere focus because we often hear uh, some of the, the harshest critics from those who are least trustful of government. So don't wait for your city, your county, or Governor Polis to say, wear a mask. Wear one because you love yourself. You love your family, and you love your community. Uh, and of course, we value that local flexibility. If it's part of a mitigation plan to reduce the increase in rates, we support uh, mask wearing. Uh, if counties want to use their flexibility to do a little bit less and do other things, uh, we absolutely have, uh, can work with uh, the counties that have been successful thus far in that as well. Thank you, Governor. But the other part of my question, the more important one, is that I'm sure you've heard by now about the attempt, the foil attempt to kidnap the governor of, uh, of uh, Michigan and uh, about the FBI's working with local law enforcement when it comes to potential violence uh, during the election. And just about a half hour ago, the uh, Denver FBI office announced a program to on social, social media to, you know, as part of that same effort. I'm wondering what you know about that, whether or not you've gotten some concerns your, for your own self, uh, your own personal safety, uh, and uh, what is happening as far as uh, security with local law enforcement from violence. So the Colorado Department of Public Safety is in regular contact with federal law enforcement agencies uh, to make sure that uh, all Coloradans are safe. Um, that, that, that includes me, it includes you, uh, it includes our, uh, our, our properties across the state. Uh, we obviously can't make any specific comments on any particular threats or concerns. But what I think is most important at this juncture is to focus on what unites us rather than divides us. Our belief in the constitutional principles of our founding fathers, our belief in the fair and free elections, uh, our belief uh, in a democratic republic that aspires to represent the voice of every person, our belief that the only just uh, government governs with the consent of the governed. 
Uh, and regardless of policy differences on the left, on the right, in the middle, up, down, uh, we're all proud to be Coloradans. We're all proud to be what uh, Americans. Um, I'm glad Governor Whitmer is safe. Uh, I, you know, our we have a, a great team in Colorado that uh, uh, works on on similar matters and and uh, hopes to keep all of our elected officials and residents as safe as possible and a strong collaboration between federal law enforcement and local law enforcement. Univision, el departamento de Tri County planea establecer restricciones más estrictas de COVID-19 mm -hmm. debido al aumento de casos. ¿Qué hará usted para controlar la propagación del virus? En algunas áreas en donde el número de casos es más alto, más hospitalizaciones, por ejemplo, uh, es importante tener más restricciones y apoyo a esas decisiones. Es más importante, en, es importante en todo el estado usar tapabocas cuando están cerca de otras personas, pero es lo más importante en las áreas que, uh, donde tienen uh, un número de casos más alto. I'm Chris Vanderveen, uh, reporter at Nine News. I have a two-part question. One, I think you've touched on a little bit, but I want to get more specific. Um, should the public in Colorado simply be readying themselves for, while you're doing the mask mandates in 30-day increments, just be ready for masks to be mandated until there is a viable and widely available uh, vaccine on the market? Should, in essence, should we be ready for this through the end of the year, if not the beginning of next year? And two, as we are entering the end of the year and we're talking about Thanksgiving and Christmas and all sorts of things that have worried people for many, many months in terms of spread, what is your message to Coloradans as we near the end of the year? Should we be prepared mentally for a more difficult time? I believe that more of this is behind us than ahead of us. Uh, that being said, there's a challenging weeks and months ahead. While we are hopeful that after a vaccine is demonstrated to be safe and effective, uh, the first dosages of that vaccine will hopefully be delivered in Colorado in November and December. We also know that it's not likely to have a, a level of vaccination available to the general public until early next year. Uh, the initial vaccine will be available to nurses and frontline workers and will be very limited uh, to increase those who, the protection for those who are most at risk, but will not be enough to uh, change the public health situation. Um, with regard to masks, it's a question every Coloradan uh, should ask themselves. Should I require myself to wear this extra piece of clothing to keep myself and my family safe? I know that the vast majority of Coloradans are doing so. The vast majority of Coloradans uh, will do so. Uh, as long as there is a significant threat of this deadly virus in our state. Hi there. Um, my name is Jessica Snower. I'm with the Gazette in Colorado Springs. Um, it looks like that we're kind of in a third wave of coronavirus. Um, we had the highest seven day average, it looked like since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, why is that? Is that because schools are back in session? Um, could you speak to that question? I, I think the biggest reason is what we all are experiencing, which is coronavirus fatigue. Uh, but just because we're tired of the virus doesn't mean the virus is tired of us. Uh, it's still here. Uh, only roughly 5% of Coloradans have some degree of immunity because they've had it. That means 95% of Coloradans are susceptible. It has fertile ground to grow exponentially. And we just need to live like we did in late July, early August, when we were able to contain those, those rates. We need to be able to be smarter, see a few less people, wear masks when we're around others, try to be six, eight feet, 10 feet from others where we can. Uh, we need to redouble our efforts. I know we can do it because we did it. Uh, we, we saw this alarming trend uh, in July, which was devastating in some of our neighboring states, in Arizona and, and, in, and in Texas, uh, Coloradans were able to reverse that trend. We now see this alarming trend in Wisconsin and the Dakotas. 
And we want to make sure that we're also acting as Colorado to reverse this trend uh, before it overwhelms our ability to meet the medical needs of all those who contract COVID and all those who need medical assistance because of other conditions. I don't know if you saw, but House Minority Leader Patrick Neville announced today that he won't be seeking re-election to a leadership position at the Capitol. I know that you and him have clashed sometimes on coronavirus issues, but certainly issues at the Capitol as well. I'm wondering if you think uh, you'll be able to work better with another Republican in that uh, leadership position in the Colorado House. Well, I, I want to uh, thank uh, Pat Neville for his uh, service to our state. He'll continue uh, to uh, be an active, uh, engaged uh, member of the, the state legislature. Uh, we look forward to working with you know members of both parties, both through their leadership and uh, individually in broader coalitions to help move our state forward, grow our economy, save people money on health care, improve early childhood education, and provide tax relief uh, for Colorado families.